Hello dear friends of Inside Opera and Classical Music and welcome to a new video. When you go to listen to a concert or an opera, it's always nice to have some preparation on the subject, because it can make you understand much more about what are you going to listen to. Those who speak Italian certainly have an advantage in listening to the opera. If we think of the operas of Verdi, Puccini, Rossini, Donizetti, Bellini, to name just a few, certainly listening to an opera in a language that you understand is easier. In case it is not so, we can have some help. What help? The opera librettos! And how much beautiful are they? from the oldest to the most modern, which report the story of the opera, the libretto where you can read the plot, the cast that will be listened to. An unfailing help, especially if you don't know the opera. But, inevitable, there are also sponsors, absolutely necessary for the sustenance of theatres in all ages. It is well known that the costs of an opera house are very high, and I'm not just talking about the cost of conductors and soloists, but above all of the so-called fixed costs, which, among the rightly inevitable choir and orchestra, are also added stagehands, makeup artists, tailors, in addition to the administrative and managerial part all necessary, but all very expensive. Sponsors therefore become necessary, and fortunately they are never lacking, and with their support they help the opera house financially. And these are the sponsors that we find in the beautiful theatre booklets we have talked about, usually placed beautiful and discreet in various positions within the booklet. And yet there is an anecdote that I found sincerely hilarious about one of these sponsors. But before, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already what are you waiting for it's free so you help the channel grow and make it known more and more to music lovers involved in the anecdote is the austrian tenor leo sletzak he made a remarkable international career in the early 1900s including covent garden in london new york metropolitan opera and 44 different roles performed in Wien. The repertoire was that of the lyric dramatic tenor, with roles including Manrico in Il Trovatore and Radames in Aida for the Verdi repertoire and Lohengrin in the Wagnerian one. But the role for which he was famous was Verdi's Otello. He also wrote several autobiographical books, Four, to be precise, and it is from these that we find this story. In the years between 1909 and 1913, Sletzak noticed the considerable interference of advertising in the press, especially in the United States, and how this often used very invasive methods. And all this invasive advertising was also there in the world of opera. So, let's go back in time and find out what happened to make him so angry. We are at the Houston's Opera House between 1909 and 1913, and the tenor Sletzak is ready for his Otello performance. The audience takes booklets to be able to properly understand the opera and follow the words of the singers step by step. And here's what happens. Outside the castle, a tavern with an arbor. In the background, a key and the sea. It's evening, lightning, thunder, Hurricane, the choir and soloists pray for the safety of Otello, who is fighting for the Republic of Venice against the Turks. A difficult, very difficult naval battle. Otello lands and is about to proclaim the outcome of the war. Do all your cooking with crusto, the famous cooking fat. K. 
can you imagine the expression on the face of who was following the libretto? Before the famous Esultate, rejoiced by the tenor, a nice advertisement of a cooking fat. But it's not over here, Eno. Like any self respecting advertisement, it must reappear. The beautiful Esultate rejoice of the tenor finally comes, which brings the defeat of the Muslim army and the glory of Venice. The choir sings Evviva, Vittoria, long live, victory! Crasto is the only possible edible fat! Oh, well, again, gone! The opera goes on, Iago gets Cassio drunk, and in the midst of the drink, drink with me, who doesn't cook with Crasto is crazy. Cassio drunk, duels with Montano. Montano is wounded, there is a huge noise, there are those who flee, those who cry for help, Otello arrives and... Crasto is without competition! Otello orders to lower the swords. Cassio is demoted from the role of captain. Montano is rescued, and Iago goes to count the crowd. The beautiful Desdemona enters for the sweet and passionate duet. Otello approaches her. Who once cooked with Crasto doesn't want any other fat. The duet ends, closing the first act. And in the following acts, the libretto seems to maintain the fidelity of the opera. Otello's jealousy grows. Desdemona's handkerchief is missing. Otello believes her unfaithful because of the doves brought by Iago, and he suffocates her. Emilia enters the master's room and finds her lying dying, so she starts to scream. Everyone rushes to understand what is happening. Desdemona finally takes her last breath. And then Iago's deception is revealed. Otello, destroyed by pain and remorse, stops himself and dying approaches Desdemona's body. Before killing you, my bride, I kissed you. Now dying. Ask only for the only cooking fat, Crasto. Un bacio, a kiss. I cannot imagine the expression of those who found themselves in front of a booklet like that. Now we can smile at it thinking about the comic wave of an audience that simultaneously reads something like that. I doubt, however, that the singers could have taken it on an equally comical side. The anecdote comes directly from the memories of Leo Slitzak, who tells us about the fat Crasto, while the writer Ethan Morden identifies this fat in the better-known Crisco. Whatever fat was the protagonist of this story definitely got a considerable publicity. Impossible to forget. Thank you for watching this video. I remind you to leave a support like and subscribe to the channel. And we meet again next week with a new video.